I think it's just a normal floss tube. We've got projects, we've got finishes, we've got kits, we've got haul, we've got shout outs, we got giveaways, we got all the things. So let's just do it. Let's just do it. Hey friends. Hello, hello, friends. Thank you for being here. I'm Hannah. This is the Pokey Needle. And today we are going to talk about some cross stitch. How are y'all doing today? Me, I'm good. I'm good. It's great. It's a good day. I just keep distracting my own self. So what I was saying was I planned on filming last weekend and all the things happened. And I just was kind of going with the flow and I'm like, it's not a big deal. And then Monday, well, that was still partly the weekend, right? And then Tuesday and Wednesday, I don't know if it was a chainsaw. I don't know what it was. I don't even know which neighbor it was, but one of them behind me was going to town. Like, like cutting down a forest or building a house or something. And as much as it annoyed me, I did not want it to annoy you. So then I did all the mom things and got busy the rest of the week and just didn't have time. So here we are. It's June 1st. Happy June. I hope everybody is having a wonderful day. The weather is beautiful here. Um, starting to get into summer temperatures, which is not terrible. I'm not really a summer person. I like the cooler weather most of the time. Um, I like to be cozy. I like to, you know, the crisp air outside. I don't know. It's just, it's a vibe with me. Spring was always my favorite growing up. And now I think fall's my favorite, but um, anyway, let's get into some cross stitch, shall we? Um, let's see. So I guess what I was saying was I wrote out like my, it's not really a script, but my notes from last week and I haven't really updated them. Um, so hopefully it doesn't make it too crazy. I think I have five finishes, a couple whips, and a little bit of haul. So yeah, stick around. Let's hang out. Um, let's just get into something. Something, something. I'm going to start with this one. Um, and I'll pop in a little picture. And on, on another note, I mess with my lighting and hopefully we don't have any weird auras today because that was weird. Um, this I want to show you and then I'll take it out of the frame and it's probably a dirty frame. It's just one I had in my basement, but I wanted to show you um, what it's going to look like because I'm giving it away tomorrow. Um, this is Dangerous to Go Alone by Choco Choco Stitch and here's what the pattern looks like. Um, I changed it up just a tiny bit and here are the colors. It's just DMC. I don't mean just DMC, like just DMC, because DMC is beautiful too. Um, so I think the call for were like these colors. And then some of them I may not have used because I changed the pattern a little bit. And then I added in this color for strawberry, which is 3705, because I didn't, I wanted it to con like, have some contrast with the 666 for the red. Um, so I went with like a pinker hue. And then I added this for the skin tone because they had the old man's face charted in the bright orange, which I don't know in the video game, it may very well be bright orange. Um, so here is my finish and it's gonna show glare. Uh, we'll just hold back here. I just wanted to show you guys, this is what the frame is going to look like. It's just showing me. Um, this is what the it's going to look like in the frame. So this is a standard 8 by 10 and so that's why I went with the size fabric that I did. And I'm going to just take it out of that so that I can show you the piece. Okay. Um, so let's see. This is from Zelda, for those of you who do not know, which is a video game. It has cat hair on it. And 
the normal scene has a sword here. I made this for my niece who is gra just graduated and so she loves strawberries. So I charted and added a little strawberry with, I don't think you can see, it's like a silvery crinic in there or treasure braid um, for the strawberry, around the strawberry. I just kind of freehanded that, but yeah, I think she'll love it. So that's finish number one. Um, let's see. Let's look at stats. Um, I started this in May and that's not on my sheet. Sorry, I'm, I don't know how good I'm gonna be doing on this today. This is 35 count Weeks Dye Works Onyx, which is a pretty black fabric. I can tell you these letters up here, they look pretty good. I really struggle with some of those. Everything else stitched really fast. And I don't know if it's just that there were so many letters. Um, I think this was around 1500 stitches and the majority is the words, but because it's words, I'm sorry, I keep going back and forth. I should just hold it still. Um, but because it's words, I wanted to make sure that there, you know, it was even the letters on top and bottom. There is one slub in there somewhere. Um, Oh, on the E, you can kind of see, look, that little baby slub is weird. And I, there was nothing I could do. I tried to work around it, but everything else came out pretty clean. So I'm happy with that. Um, next, we're gonna look at Freya. I finished Freya, yay. So this is a Manny May piece that I started in 2023. Um, I believe it was, yeah, May 10th, 2023. And so I worked on it last May. And I wanted to finish it this May. Mine looks nothing like the original. I went through two, three color changes. Um, and this is my color palette that I ended up on, which is a mix of color and cotton and DMC. And so I'm loving the teals. Um, I stitched this on 28 count Whisper Lugana which would be two over two. And here she is, so pretty. There's a few specialty stitches in there. I don't know if you can see them. I kind of just threw them where I thought they should go, but I didn't start out that way. So, um, so it was kind of an afterthought, but I really love the way this piece turned out. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. It's about, I don't know, maybe an eight by eight piece. Like it's pretty good size. So if I turned it into a pillow, it would be a small pillow. So I just wanted to say if anybody wanted an actual like pillow size out of this, you could do it on 25 count. And it would be probably, be, I mean, you know, especially if you put a border on the outside, a good like, maybe even 12 inch pillow form. So this would be really pretty for a pillow. Um, I honestly have no idea if I'm gonna do that or if I'm going to frame it. Like, I don't know. One thing I have learned, friends, this thing I have learned, <laughs> I am totally a process stitcher. You probably noticed that, like I'm not showing finishes, which, which, is a goal for the month of June to get out my finished bucket because I want to FFO a bunch of things. And I started doing that last month, but I haven't shown any of it because I've had so much to show you guys. I need to get on finishing things because I think part of me not um, wanting to finish is because I haven't been finishing. But also I put a lot of projects on my plate. I've been wanting to do sewing. I've been wanting to do, well, I have a whole stack of stuff that's just not cross stitch, you know, that are projects. So anyway, I'm going to focus on finishing. Um, okay. The next project is polar bear ornament. I think it's called by Shannon Christine. I will pop in a little picture here. I couldn't, she, the only one she has is like this big on a little piece of paper. So it's not a very good quality, but this is my little finish. This is just fabric. I dyed. It's a scrap. And this thing is so tiny. Look at that. It's like, 
having maybe two inches. And this is 18 count, so 36. So yeah, it's tiny. Look at that. Oh, it's the air. Sorry, the air. The uh, light is coming through. Look how cute that little guy is. Now, I don't know if I love it on this fabric with the like pink and blues, but I think it'll be a really cute little ornament. I'm not going to be like, oh, look at that fabric. Like, I think we get too critical of ourselves sometimes, you know? But this little guy, I was going to just keep it till July because I had started it the other day. And I was like, I think it's like 100 stitches. So I just finished them up. And I had just used, sorry, that was two over two on 18 count. I don't know if I said that. Two over two? Yes, two over two. That one was thick because it was little. So I just used um, flosses I kept pulled from Color and Cotton that matched like her DMC conversion. Next finish. I don't think I ever showed you guys this. This was the very last, well, second to last um, start that I did for Mania. Um, and I managed, I hit my goals. I hit my goals for Mania. I couldn't believe it. I can't remember how many stitches I got. It was like, yeah, I don't know. I'll share, I can share more stats if you guys even care. Um, but I hit my goals. I got 24 new starts and ended up with five finishes. So I got a lot of projects started and I don't know the percentage because now I have, I think it's like 50 projects like a lot well to be fair a few of them are just still kitted but they're in the bags um but my goal is to get most things I know there's always going to be a few bigger things that carry over but all the little ones done by the end of the year so I wanted to get them started so without further ado let me show you the project so this one was a one-day stitch this is by box and fox it's on 25 count white opalescent lugana and, you know, one of the problems I have with Lugana, and this will be just fine, it's, it looks like it, I mean, it'll pull out just fine, but some of the projects I've done have a lot of pulling where the fabric just gets too tight. Um, I don't know if this is just called reindeer. I'm not sure. I just used my own colors and just picked different browns that I thought looked good, looked good together. My goodness. Um... But yeah, he's a cute little guy, a few inches, very cute, make a cute little ornament. So we'll see him FF done. FFO soon. Words. Okay, moving on. The next one is Squirrel. I, again, I don't know what it's called. Sampler and Primitives. It's Baby, Samantha, and Tom is the name of the pattern. Um, but I'm doing this, well, I did the Squirrel. And I really like their version with the dark squirrel. And I really thought, oh, a gray squirrel would have been good. But we have a lot of red squirrels around here. So I went ahead and did one of those. Um, here are the colors that I ended up with. If anybody is curious, um, I can let you know. But it's just a variety of browns. They're looking very meager. <laughs> And let me see what I stitched this on. It's 36 count um, fiber on a whim parchment. And here is the cute little guy. And this turned out to be about two by four inches. It took me a couple days to stitch, so not too bad. But I think this will be so adorable, like an adobe bowl mixed in with my fall fabric, just this cute little pillow. So. I'm excited to get that finished. Okay, I think, is that it? Did I get through the finishes? I feel like that was quick. Did I talk about them enough? Here, you wanna see that again? I can talk longer and you can look at it again. I love squirrels. My, my parents have a squirrel. It's a bad squirrel, it's a naughty squirrel. I don't know if it's the same squirrel or if like they just keep doing it, but they have a squirrel, they have skylights in their dining room and they have this squirrel. I'm so bad, it is so bad. They have this squirrel and it like hides its nuts up there. And like, I think it was two years ago, they had a, it like broke the skylight. So they had to get it fixed. 
and they cannot keep the squirrel. I don't know. They have a, is it their pair? No, I don't, maybe I just don't care. <laughs> it's just, squirrels are funny. I like squirrels. I probably can tell you lots of squirrel stories as we stitch squirrels. Okay, the next um, project I wanted to show you guys is my new project for Manny May, which is Tent Maker Small September. And I, I tried, I thought about uh, finishing this and some of these projects because I'm kind of just going with the flow with the colors and how I want them. It takes more brain power for me to, to like get them out and stitch them. So I wanted to do more. This is, I think, around 4,200 stitches total. And I just didn't get it done. I just, I didn't get it done this year. So here's my color palette. Um, again, I just picked from Stash picked what I liked, a variety of warm fall colors. And I'm stitching this on that same 18 count fabric that I over dyed. And here she is. This is where I got to. Um, this is not the corner. Like these are not the edges. There's the square will be a little bit bigger, but I got a lot more progress. Um, I hit my goal. My goal was to get, I think 2000 stitches. So I, I want to do a, like a bigger Carolyn Manning next year. So I probably won't pick this up again um, until next year, but I am really liking how it's turning out. Now, again, this is the fabric that it doesn't matter where I put it. It shines, it shows up brighter to you guys. Like it's really dull and really kind of dark and dingy. And it looks like, oh, it's on a blue fabric. Um, like. I don't even know how to make it not do that, but it doesn't look blue like this anymore at all to me. So it's really interesting how the camera does that. But it's every camera. I've tried three different cameras and it, speaking of camera, okay, I told you guys, I got a new camera. Um, could I be more like distracted? This is two over two. Okay, sorry, somebody was outside making noise. Um, yeah, so I got my camera out and I've been playing with it. And hopefully, my thought is as I do like finishing and stuff, I can start filming some of that to share with you guys. So um, it might be a while, but I'm redoing my craft room. Well, not like today, but sometime in the future. Um, I painted it, um, I don't know, was that last fall? Or this winter I don't know I got it painted and started doing stuff and then I decided I want to switch up some things so nothing major maybe maybe a little bit but not really um, a little bit of new furniture but anyway so I figured that would be fun to just show you guys and bring you along and I have to figure out a little bit better how to do some of that filming because floss tubes first time I've ever done any filming of any kind so I gotta I gotta get better at it anyway Here's one more start that I started like a week or so ago. And what happened was last time I was going to share it with you guys, somehow it didn't get pulled out of the project bag. So I had a whole stack of bags and this one just, I was like, that's when I was like, I don't, I don't know where it went. So lovely hearts by textilly. Um, I went ahead and started this with the Victor. I put it on a floss ring, but, um, Victor cottage garden threads. And I know I can leave it on here, but I figured if I had, I, I, whatever, you know, you do you. I love this floss. And as far as like floss, it's good. It, it, I don't know what their base is, but it feels as good as like color and cotton and um, DMC to me. So it feels like a really good floss, but it's a little bit dark and light at the top. So nice red. Um, I am stitching this on 28 count antique white Lugana. And here's my little start. Um, I did a center start. I'm just gonna leave that flipped over. I did a center start and you can see the variegation. I absolutely love using, cause she had stitched it, I believe looks like 
two color ways, which I thought about doing, but I knew I had ordered this floss and I really wanted to try some cottage garden. And I think it's turning out pretty good. So there's my little baby start. Um, 28 count, I guess, is two over two, right? That's, that's what I would do. Um, yeah. So I'm excited to get this one going. I don't know when I'll get back to it, if it'll be January or if I could slide it in somewhere. It's not really big, but I really like fill up my, my calendar. Um, and then one more project and then we'll get on to haul and plans. I feel like this is going to be a shorter one. Oh, I have a couple kits. I have a couple kits to sh things I kitted to get started. I want to show you. Okay. So the next project I want to show you is I know I mentioned it and I wanted to show you on Monday and I didn't get to it, but Plum Street Samplers, American Welcome. I have joined the cell. Um, I'll go ahead and pop in all the names of all the wonderful ladies that are hosting the sal. It has been absolutely so fun because we are all starting in different places. Um, I'm going to show you my start. I messed it up. I messed up. So we had contemplated different divisions of it and my mind was like stuck on an old one or something and so I completely started in the wrong place well I didn't okay I didn't start in the wrong place I kept going the wrong direction I guess so I'm stitching this on 36 count picture this plus opal so it's a fat eighth and it will take up every inch of this I will have about a two inch border on the top and bottoms so and then I think the three inch border on the side so that eight on 36 count will cover it but that's why I chose to do a center start um, and I started with the the red house which is probably I'm gonna scoot up just a tad so I can show you guys this I think it's my only called for color which is winter berry by color and cotton Although I think, I'll show you in a second. I think all my colors are color and cotton. I just picked from stash. So I know this roof is Drosselmeyer, which is gray, um, or like really gray, dark gray, like black, but it has like a green hue to it, which I thought would be amazing. And I have not filled in my windows yet. If they look stark, they are. Um, when I realized, I was like almost done with the house when I looked back at the sheet and realized, I completely stitched this house when I wasn't, but like that's like a whole nother month. So next month I'm gonna do the grass underneath the houses and then stop. So then um, that's technically like two months. I didn't mean to do that. I don't mean to like jump ahead. Um, but yeah, this is really, I what I love about this pattern is um, I haven't done any of the Plum Street ones, like live, live on Little is that Plum Street? Like, you know what I mean? The, the Quake, the Summer Quaker and all those. I haven't done any of those, so I'm so excited. But I love that you get the houses and then this is all like solid fill-in. Um, but then you get the whimsy of the flowers on top. And I just love that um, it just kind of has all of it. So I think what I'm going to do next month is head over this way. I was trying to... or not next month, in two months when I'm back on track. Um, so I'll have a little bit of the grass filled in and I was trying to decide if I wanna go down or if I wanna to try to like do some of these words, but I think I'm gonna do this section with the flag. And then from there, I can go up and down. So then I can start working on the top and then you know every other month or whatever, alternate. Um, so, I got, and then, oh, let me show you the floss. I'll show you the floss first. So here is my floss. I, again, I don't know how it like lays where it kind of catches. Does that make sense? Like the corners are catching in the floss. Um, and I've got cat hair in here, that's no good. So here's the colors. Um, 
I think I toned down the blue a little bit because the it calls for Daydream, which I used in Freya, so I have it. I just don't know. I, you know, I don't mind changing colors back after, like if I feel like it needs different colors. They're not all showing there, but there's the palette. And I kind of really like it on this fabric. Okay, now, I got the most beautiful thing from the scrappy chick, Cindy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, she makes these beautiful project keeper. Oh, wow. I don't know. I think it was cat hair that came up with this bag when I picked it up. It, like, threw some in my eye. Sorry. Um. So she makes these and sells them. And it's absolutely like, um, I this is my first like project keeper. Like it's so special to me. Like I've never had one. So, and I know I was gonna make some bags. And every time I think about like buying bags, and I know I spend money on cross stitch, friends. I know it. But every time I'm like, I got to pay for my kids' school and the bathroom renovation, and then we're gonna go, you know. And it's like all the things, and I'm like. I don't need a bag because I need the rest of the stuff. Anyway, let me open this and show you. So at some point I'll start collecting bags. I just feel like we're in like the weirdest season. I don't know. Maybe life always has weird seasons, but look at this. I mean, look at this. And like the zippers are so beautifully made and installed. Like, this is what intimidates me. I've never sewn a zipper. I have done so much sewing in my life, and every time I had a zipper, I was like, hey, mom, sew a zipper. <laughs> so, but you know, one of the things is like, and then there's pockets in the back. Y'all, I don't know if she has any more of this pattern left, but she had made several of these and listed them. So if you're not following her over on Instagram, you should. And here's her handle. I'll put it down here. Um, but yeah, thank you, Cindy. This means so much. You don't even know. Um, well, I don't even know what I was saying. What was I saying? I was like in the middle of a sentence. And probably shopping. Speaking of shopping, let's get into haul. Um, yeah, and then I'll show you my kits, and then we'll be done. Um, well, giveaway winners, too. Giveaway winners. Okay, so another non-bag, bag-adjacent item I ordered from Starlight Citry. I was going to order one of her, um, what are these called? A thread bag. I don't know if that's what she calls them. They're like these little project keeper things. And I was going to order one last April for my birthday and this April came around I was like I still have not got one of those so I went ahead and got one um very well made very well made. she is really good at what she does um cute little and she makes the jewelry to go on them and everything cute little strawberry and this is a strawberry one and if you guys haven't seen these before um she does have a a really good Instagram channel where she shows her projects, but also a floss tube. So if you would like to check her out, um, but look at this. So I picked for what she had in stock. Um, I think it's cute. I love strawberries and then the, you know, it has soft inside and a place for your needle and it's just, it's so well made. I absolutely love this. Um, so I like having this. I don't, I think it would be great to have like one in like with your projects. So that was one thing I wanted to try to make was just like a little thread bed for some of my project bags. I mean, even if it's like half the size, I think it would be okay. I like that I can just put like I can just lay my floss in there if I want to and it keeps it nice. Um, but I think it'd be nice to play around with making these, but I like having this one. I just set it by my, my station with whatever project I'm working on so that the, because I will, I don't mind putting floss like right here. I put floss, you guys probably don't care about any of this. 
I put floss back on the ring. I don't waste it um, for the most part. It, it, I keep it all, but I don't do that until I'm like typically done with the project um, or done with that color for a while because I'm not gonna put it on there and then like an hour later take it back off. I just, no. So a lot of these bags do have little nests and I think it'd be really nice to have more of these and I will be getting more in the future. Eventually. Okay, one piece of fabric. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, and I will pop in the pattern I'm talking about. Um, this is a little bit of a tangent because I'm kind of all over the place and whatever. That's just life, right? We just pivot. Um, 18 count confetti Ada. So this was probably like a $5 piece. I think it's, yeah, it's a picture of this plus. And I think that's, I mean, that's a t the tag on the back you see, but um, it's got some green and so it's like cotton candy and the pinks and there's like, I don't know, it's so gorgeous. Um, let me put a piece of paper behind it. Goodness, there's like cat hair everywhere. Can I think that's pretty accurate. Um, so if I go closer to the light, it's weird. I'm still trying to figure out if my lights are too close. Yeah, that's better. I moved it back like a foot so I can get closer. Anyway, this fabric's gorgeous. I don't stitch a lot of bright stuff. So what I wanted to mention was the Colorado cross stitcher Sherry has her cross stitch camp And I did it last year and loved it. And so I'm doing it again this year. And for June, um, it is to stitch something that would be multiple colors as one color or stitch something that would be one color as multiple colors. So I'll pop in the pattern here. It has nothing to do with this. I'll get to that in a second. I'm going to be stitching the Cranky Owl in multiple colors. So probably two colors, but I did another pattern last year um, for one of her challenges. And so I picked Modern Folk Embroidery, Cranky Owl for June. And then what I really wanted to do, but I don't have time, is on this fabric, I want to stitch Gotham Orbs in like bright colors. Because I get it that Gotham Orbs, like, I mean, can you imagine on this fabric, right? Um, I get it that it's supposed to be like depressing, but if you're depressed, you need some bright colors in your life. So I don't know when I'm going to get to that, but I've already got it like the colors charted out for it and everything. So, um, so I wanted to show you the fabric that I just got because when I considered that, I thought this will be perfect. All right, moving on. Um, I have been seeing this pattern all over the place and I just kind of had a little bit of a like FOMO action and just needed it in my life so la di da rejoice always I got it from the shepherd's needle um, a lot of places were sold out shepherd's needle I've never ordered from them and it came and it was wrapped and packaged wonderfully and came really fast so Thank you, Shepherd's Needle, and it was great. Um, but of course, it couldn't come alone. So I got Threadwork Primitive's Bittersweet October as well. And I had not seen this anywhere. I, I'm a sucker for, for the holidays. And I just, the birds and the bittersweet, and I just thought this was too precious. So I grabbed this one. And that was it from there. I'm really trying to be good. I've been so bad with spending money. Like for real. Um, I give myself a budget, but my budget's been like, it needs to go on a little diet. So the next couple months, I'm trying not to. And I told my husband, I'm going to do a no spend, but that means at least $100, right? <laughs> I know I'll be buying. Anyway, um, here's my fine floss club. I don't know if I ever tell you guys, I am in floss clubs. Um, I'm in color and cotton. I wasn't classic color works in the weeks I works and I decided because I'm 
shop so much that I just grab a few of those here and there. Um, so I dropped out of those for now, but I am in color and cotton and I am in the weeks or the, um, Fat Quarter Shop, my goodness, Fat Quarter Shop MPI. MPI has a lot of colors, y'all, and I stitched on it. I don't remember which project it was. A couple months ago, I was like, ooh, it's very, very nice. So it's worth the investment. I'm glad I'm getting the colors. It'll take years. I'm here for it. Okay, a couple more things. Um, so many of you know, I ordered from market and my one of my orders was lost in the mail never to be seen again and this was in that order and i could not get it so now people are restocking this so i picked it up from hobby house they had it on sale they might still have it on sale like a good sale so if you guys want to grab it i'm so excited now i need to find fabric i purchased black but now i think I want to do a lighter color. I want to like prim it up just a little bit, but I do love the black. So, um, I have a few options and we'll see that might like, if I have to place an order that might just go on the list, but I would like to get these stitched up this year. Um, I can't remember how big they are, but I think like each one stitches up in like a day. So that'd be awesome. But these are like the cutest things when this came out, like, last summer or whatever the kit would like because they um do clubs like through annie's and i don't remember is that on facebook anyway i wasn't in it and i was sad and i was watching them show it on their floss tube and drooling and being like i just need those so it's kind of funny it's one of those like unicorn patterns for me i guess but not really because like i have it Anyway, I'm so happy. So I had I got this from Hobby House. And so I've been wanting to place an order at Hobby House. And again, you know, I'm sure you guys can relate. You want to place orders everywhere and then things just, oh, I'll do it next month. I'll do it next month. And this has been sitting there in my cart for like six months. So I grabbed it. I grabbed it. I got it. I got me some Martha. So this is a, an exclusive there. Um, hands across the sea samplers and I've really been wanting this and then I kind of got to the point where I was like what I mean what if they don't have it next month so I grabbed it and I went ahead and grabbed these were five dollars and so I didn't take it out of the plastic I'll try not to like move it around but it's a like a you know a little cleaning cloth I thought that is so cute I don't know if I'll clean with it, but maybe, maybe. It's so cute. Okay, and then one more thing I got there was some cottage garden threads. And so I went ahead and grabbed a few colors. I got two of each. Now I, I wanna stitch a coffee Quaker. And so the first one is Tea Party. And I don't know if I like this for the coffee Quaker. It's kind of got red hues to it. Um. You know, like a little more orangey than I was hoping for. It will definitely be beautiful with whatever. Sorry, I was looking at it. Um, it'll definitely be beautiful with whatever I decide to stitch with it. But I don't know if I went back for the coffee Quaker. So they have several brown ones. And, you know, that's just part of shopping online. But. These are $5 each, so I was like, well, I don't want to buy like 10 different kinds. Um, and then the next two, I'll just show you, cobblestone and swamp gum. And I just think a pattern like Faith that I was, I guess I'll, I'll pop it in here. I showed it last week, but the Faith, Hope, and Love series. Um, and it was mentioned, I've had a couple of people say, hey, I like these patterns, let's do some stitch alongs. I really wanna do a stitch along with Faith. So if you're interested, let me know because um, I've already charted like how to do it. And I was thinking four months or six months. Um, and we can talk about that next time, I guess. So let me know if you're interested. I wanna do it in one of these colors instead of 
the, I think it's three colors. Is it three colors it's charted in or four? But I just thought something like this would be beautiful. So I got those. Um, and Laura over at Textili had shown a finish and I assume all of you are following her, right? If not, get over there. Um, she had shown a finish in this beautiful frame from Amazon a couple weeks ago. And I paused the video and went and bought myself one. I think it's four by six. I have no idea what it's going to be used for, but I mean, this thing is substantial. It's hand carved. It is gorgeous. So I was like, oh no, I need that. So I picked that up. And then this was at the tractor store when I went to go buy something, maybe cat food. I don't know. It's $20 tag. It just says metal mailbox. I probably paid half that, like it was on sale. And it's very green, and I'm not really a green kind of person, so I will be painting it. But look at this thing. Sorry, it's kind of loud. It is metal, and it is a real post box. Look at that. It is so cute. So I don't know what exactly I'm going to do with it. Like if I'm going to like, you know, because it opens all the way, like if I'm gonna pop it open or if it's just gonna, but I'll let you guys know when it, when it does happen. I didn't get that in there. Um, but yeah, it's got hinges, or hinges. It's got holes so you can hang it. Like it's a real post box, like it's so cute. So I grabbed that and I think I paid like 10 or $12, like score. And I had credit, so I was like, ooh, it's like free. Okay. Let's see, I have kids and giveaway real quick. And then we'll wrap it up. Oh, wait, no, one more haul. It's sitting here, it's hiding. I know I mentioned Java Girl Stitches and Anna. I'll put their information in. Um, did some of these boxes and she, I have a couple more, but I went ahead and purchased this gray one. I mean, obviously everybody's, in the boxes but they did the B ones and I was like ooh because August is going to be my B month um I'm probably not going to stitch as much as I want to because I have so many things I want to finish but I think like every year I'm going to do B stuff in August so it's magnetic there is like a snap but it's actually just magnetic which is nice so you're not going to like you know pull on this now oh it's got the thing in it um this was cheap, maybe $10 on Amazon last week. Um, so you can tell, but it's not going to, I'm not actually using it for a travel box or anything, so it'll be fine. But as far as like the inside, I really like it. And I'm going to show you why. Um, and maybe it's laziness on my part but the little tray comes out and then I don't have to rip anything out. I can just decorate it how I like. So I really liked that. I liked the gray. There were a couple more that I liked more than this. And of course the colors that I wanted were sold out. So then it has the little tray in it, which I may or may not put back in, um, you know, rip the stuff out of this. And I wanted to show you cause I started pulling it out and I was like, Oh, I better wait. And it has the little like earring thing that comes out. So, but it's a good size. Um, I don't know if this is like five by seven ish, four by six, five by seven, like it's little. Um, I'd like to get one bigger one, but I think something like this. Oh, I meant to bring it in and I didn't. I'll show you guys when I show more boxes. Maybe I'll like do a little box segment. Um, the thing that I've used for the last couple of years is pretty small that holds all my tools. So um, I think this would be really nice that if I want to, it's it's not too much to like sit in the living room on a table. Like it, it'll still look nice. So I kind of really like that. And that's it for haul. Um, and I wanted to show you what I kitted and I did not bring the patterns. So I'll pop them up. I was... <sighs> Y'all, I, after, um, I have got cat hair everywhere. Oh my goodness. 
It won't come off. Y'all, after May, I don't know how y'all do New Year. I don't know. My brain was like, I got start out as like, no more, no more, no more. Just no more starts. And then like a day later, I was like, all right, what am I gonna get? No, for real though, I was planning on stitching four new patriotic pieces, which American Welcome was one of. And I just decided, you know what? I'm not gonna stress myself out. I really miss my whips. I want to get back to them. So I picked one patriotic and it's a small, but I've been wanting to stitch it for a long time. And that is Teresa Kogut, um, Patriotic Star, I think it's what it's called. So here's the picture. And here are the colors that, again, I just picked from Stash. Color and cotton conversion. So those are the colors I picked. And I think it, I'm not sure about the brown. That's the one thing that I was trying to find the right shade. And maybe that's going to... Um, and here is, again, the grace. At some point, maybe I'll figure this out. Here's my fabric, which is 28 count fog from Picture This Plus. So it's very, very light fabric. I think that'll look cute. So that's start number one. And then start number two for this month. Oh, the fabric I did not get out yet. Start number two is garden something. Sampler and primitives. My brain has planted because that the Bible verse that's on it, but here is the pattern. And I just feel like my soul needs this one right now. It's it's spring, summery, gardeny. You know what I mean? So I picked this 32 count white, um, antique white. linen. So I just picked the white linen and then my colors are a mess. They're not on a ring yet. And it is a mix of everything. And I was trying to pick colors that were similar to the called for for the most part. So if you see, there is what we're going for. So those are the starts for June. You know it has to happen. It always has to happen. It's just, I don't know. If you know, you know. It's like real. It's a real thing. I don't know. Can you guys see? You can probably see part of the blanket. The cat's just laying here sleeping. She's sighing. Um, okay. So June project goals. I'm just going to pop the pictures in because that's just easier. Um, so I'm going to be doing American Welcome Sal at the end of June for the second section and fix my little error there. I want to do the Cranky Owl, um, for the Colorado Prostature Challenge. I need to get my Star Trek pillow goal done. Um, I'm stitching that for my dad for his birthday in December, so I've got to get that done. Um... I'm going to do the Patriotic Star and, of course, the Garden one. And I want to finish my bear and work on my eagle. And I'm going to do get some progress on my Earth Goddess. Um, so every month I'm going to go back and forth between my Mirabilia and my Earth Goddess. And hopefully this time next year or sooner, they'll both be done. And then every year I'll just pick two fancy ladies to do, which I think will be really fun. Um, oh, I want to get my indigo lane. I want to get the top done and, and get that little cute little, whatever it is, box, whatever it is put together. Um, let's see, star dragon. I, because I have so many things I want to work on, I really want to get some things finished. So I decided to only put a few hundred stitches in that this month. And the next month I want to start the dragon. So I'm excited about that. Um, so I'm going to work on Star Dragon, and then I want to FO um, finish um, Strawberry Fields and pick up Let No Net and Snare Me Again, because this one has been, I feel like it's, I mean, it's only been a couple of months, but I feel like I really just need to get back to it. So I want to put a few 
few, well, a couple thousand stitches in it. I don't remember. I have it like, I want to get down to the bird. I want to like do the bird wing and then uh, we'll go from there, but I want to get into it. And Proverbs 31, I thought I had more progress done and I pulled that out this morning. I was like, ooh. So I don't know how far I'll get on it, but I want to get a couple days in on that and castle celebration because I'm so far behind. Everybody else has put that one to bed. Um, so I want to get some progress on that. I want to stitch on the castle this month, I think, and try to get like the top. And then hopefully, you know, by fall, I can get this, that one done. Um, let's see. And then whatever time I have left, after doing all of that is going to go into birds and butterflies. That one is deceptively time consuming. I feel like every time I pull it out, I get like a little flower done and I want to, I, you know, it's not one of those quick finishes. So I want to work, work, work on that one, at least a few days every month. Um, and then I think the artsy housewife has a stitch long coming up in July. So I don't know how that'll, factor into things once I figure that out. Um, I mean, it's not going to affect this month, but moving forward, it may bump birds and butterflies. I don't know. So, I mean, it won't bump it off. It just might take some of the time. So I have so many projects, y'all. I think we all do have things we want to stitch. And when I, I kind of, you know, when I got the start out as I was looking at how many things I'm stitching as far as like the bigger projects. Now, the beginning of the year, I only had like two or three and I was like, I need to get some more things started because I need, like, I feel like I need options. <laughs> I really, I stitch what I love every day. I don't, even if I have a list of get this and this and this done, I think that's one of the reasons why it's like, oh, if I have three things to choose from, I pick which one. Cause some of them, you know, if they're a tighter weave or a darker fabric or whatever, I gotta be like in the right mindset to stitch on that stuff. If I'm tired or what, you know what I mean? Like you need the easier projects. So I love having the variety, but I also wanna be mindful and not just start things that I've never seen finishes other than on the smalls. The smalls, you know, you can always finish, but the, the larger ones, I really wanna get progress on. Um, so I started my list for kidding um, to get things started in January. So I'll set my goals and, you know, um, a lot of my projects, most of them, I think will be done by the end of the year. And in January I can start some of these other yummy ones. Um, so next month I want to share all of that with you guys. And I really want to not rush into like hosting my own stitch alongs and things, but there are a couple that I really want to do. And I, I think it would be a, like, I always appreciate when I get more notice. So I think what I want to do is give everybody a couple months notice on those. Um, so let me know about the faith one and when you guys think a good time to start, that would be whether it's like August, September, October, you know, and if you'd be interested and how we go about it. If anybody has any suggestions, let me know. Um, in other news, the imposter syndrome is wearing off. Um, I kind of feel like it comes and goes with the idea that like, I shouldn't be filming. I'm kind of ridiculous, you know, all the things. And I think this week it really kind of hit me that like, I really want to do this. I really want to be here and I need to carve out a place. So I'm trying to set up a different place to film because this one can get a little bit busy during the day. I mean, there's other people here, so they disappear for me, but sometimes that's not possible or I shouldn't ask that. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to get things more stabilized around here so I can continue making content, hopefully make better content. And, um, yeah, keep sharing because I love stitching and I feel like sometimes, I mean, if you do floss tube, you know, getting it all together and then getting your thoughts together and then getting the information and it's a lot of work and I'm not complaining about that one bit. I'm just saying that 
I'm not set up for it and I want to be set up for it. So I'm going to start bringing that to the table. Um, and now let's do a couple shout outs. One is Beck stitches everything. Hello, Rebecca. Um, she just put out her second floss tube. I don't know if it was today, this morning I saw it or yesterday, but she just started like a week ago. So, um, she's gotten a very warm welcome from the community and I think she is absolutely amazing and, you know, just coming out and doing her thing. She's very comfortable shaking the camera up and down. Y'all, that never happened before. There's got to be something going on here. Yes, my camera is on my couch. I am on my couch. Um, Rebecca's a, a very welcome newbie to the community. Um, I know that there's a couple more people who came out this week. I'm limiting myself to three. So if you guys know of any um, floss tubers you love, you can always share them down below. Let's see. Number two, unfinished stitches. The Ada stitchers. Um, Bonnie and Madison... I don't know how long they've had a floss tube. I know that like, was it last year they changed the name of their floss tube to Unfinished Stitches, but I absolutely adore watching them. They're a mother-daughter duo and they live in different states and they get together sometimes, but oftentimes they'll film from their two different places. Um, and let's see, they have puppies they share and they're just a joy to watch. They're just easy going. If you have not checked out Unfinished Stitches, you should do so. And the third person I want to share is Laurel from Mountain Laurel Stitches. And I was so happy to see that she started filming again. She has had um, kind of a rough go of it. I mean, I don't want to... She stopped filming um, for a while, and I'm so glad that she's back. Um, she shared some wonderful projects this last video and it's, she's very, I feel like she's very down to earth, very heartwarming and her projects are always really fun. She has some unique stuff. Um, so go check out Mountain Laurel Stitches if you haven't. She's, I, I don't know like how many people watch her videos or know of her videos, um, but she's been around for a while. She's just didn't film for quite a while. So, um, so those are my three shout outs for today. And I want to get into say thank you guys for playing along. I know this month was a little funny maybe because of me not following through with the mania that I had planned. Um, but I wanted to wrap up the giveaway because I had planned to do the giveaway every few days um, for a couple weeks. Um, with the Emily call patterns and then I didn't feel like I planned to so I wanted to wrap that up and what I decided was I'm just gonna pick four people to give away the last four patterns to so here are the patterns you guys just let me know um, which one you would like just send me an email and the winners are um, I'll put them on the screen Amy Swihart 7283 Steve Buckwalter, Stephanie Gallert, and Rosie in the Rockies. Congratulations, guys. You all want a pattern, so just let me know which one you want, and I will email it to you. Um, thank you guys for playing. I think I will do more giveaways, um, I don't know, sometime soon. I have a box that I'm collecting for things that I can mail to you guys, so they're not always going to be PDFs. I just thought that it would be nice for this time. <laughs> and um, I know last time was PDFs as well. But the good news is, is anybody can play with those, right? Um, but I wanted to say thank you guys for playing. Thank you for being here. I will plan to film again in probably two weeks. Again, I don't like to go too long because I usually have a lot of stuff to share. And I also... Um, have a lot of behind the scenes stuff I'm really trying to accomplish right now. So, you know, depending on my health, we'll see if I can get a new filming location by then or not. I don't know. Um, my health is, I'm stable, but nothing's fixed yet. Um, 
So as, as long as I can keep on keeping on, I know when things get bad, it just really throws my whole system into, like, it's really, really bad. Like, I don't even know what it is. It's insane. But it's happened twice. I don't even know what's happening, like, until it's happening. Like, I, it, there's nothing. All I know is that I've got weird stuff going on with my ribs, and nobody can see anything wrong with that. Um, they, they're still running other tests and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I'm doing okay. I probably won't mention my health again unless there's like a miracle and they find something, but you know, I'm fine without finding it as long as it goes away. With that being said, I keep asking for help to get things done. So I don't know, I go, cause I'm kind of at the mercy of other people's schedules and I appreciate it because they will cater. I have two adult children, 16 and 18, and my husband. And like, if I ask for it, they just do it. And so I'm not complaining at all. It's just that I get really rambunctious sometimes. You can't tell, right? Um, I do. I get, I am like, I want to do this. I want to do that. Let's do it now. And and there's some things that need to happen around here before all the pieces fall together. So um, I'd like to say, yeah, we'll, we'll get it all done next week and I'll be doing this and I'll be doing that. But everything takes a little bit of time. And I'm just glad we're all here for cross stitch because that happens for me and I hope for you every day in between all of the other stuff. Cross stitch is my favorite. Thanks for joining me today, guys. I am just babbling at this point, I think, and I will see you guys here in a couple weeks. I really want to put out a finished video. I want to do another floss tube in probably two weeks, and we'll see what else I get done because I am rambunctious and set a lot of goals. So um, thank you for being here. I seriously appreciate it. I love you guys. Um, say hey down below and I hope you're all having a great, great day. And I um, shook the camera again. I gotta fix this. <laughs> Happy stitching friends.